Is becoming an accredited investor worth it? Are there amazing investment opportunities that you are missing out on? Let's take a closer look. According to Investopedia, becoming an accredited investor opens up the world of hedge funds, private equity, venture capitalism, angel investments, and others. Now, according to CMI MIC, which is a mortgage investment corporation in Canada, and by the way, that is not a promotion of them, becoming an accredited investor means that you have to have a minimum of $5 million in net assets, $200,000 individually in income, or $300,000 jointly, and a million dollars uh, financial assets. Keep in mind that these values that I've just shown you are bare minimums. Accredited investments is really designed for very wealthy individuals who are looking to diversify their portfolio outside of conventional methods. This also means that they are able to withstand the added risk that potentially those uh, accredited investments pertain to. In my experience, when you're working with an accredited investment, it means that there's a higher level of risk because of lower level of liquidity and or just higher risk in general. In my experience, these types of investments work very well until they don't. And when they don't, you have a very hard time of getting your money out and or getting very much of your principal back. So there's a few things that you need to be considering before proceeding and you want to proceed with caution. Here they are. You want to be aware of internal costs or commission charges. If it's anywhere above one to 2%, there's a reason for that. And in my experience, when you get above 2%, there's a generally a higher level of risk. Be very aware of promised high returns. If you are being promised a high return, there's generally a reason for it. So for example, let's talk about mix. If you are getting a 10% rate of return that they're saying that they believe that they can present to you, you wanna ask yourself, why would a borrow borrow from you at 10% when they could borrow from the bank at, I don't know, say 5%. There's a pretty fat spread there and there's a reason for that. And the reason is they probably don't have any other choice. Now, what I'm saying is, not that you don't want to not proceed because I have seen these work out very well for investors. I've also seen the opposite happen. So you want to very much understand the granular of any information that is presented to you and just have a full scope of understanding of what the total risk is. And it needs to fit in within balance of your overall asset allocation. That is key and it'll keep you out of trouble time and time again. I'm Anna Hilberry. Thank you so much for listening.